wanted to show you guys this clip because I think it's a good example of a way that you can place bombs more intentionally. Um, a lot of the time I see players lobbing bombs in the kind of general direction of the enemy team without thinking all that carefully about the placement of them and just kind of hoping that they get a pick here and there. And you're certainly going to get some splats that way. But there are also a lot of times where you can place a bomb a lot more intentionally so that it cuts off a very specific path that you don't want the opponents to take. Um, and I do a good job of doing that here. I'm going to show you the clip and then kind of explain the thought process behind it and why it works out so well. So I've just spawned back in. I've got a teammate on the far right, so they're coming back in, but they are not in play yet, and so they're not drawing aggro. Uh, the enemy team isn't really seeing them or paying much attention to them just yet. I've got a teammate who's down on the left, and so the only player who's actually up and engaged with the enemy team is out in front of me. You can see R2 here. Um, they are backpedaling because the enemy team has just capped the zone and taken one of their teammates out, and uh, they're going to go down right here. So now... The enemy team has just had a player disconnect, but for the time being, we are at a 2v3 numbers disadvantage and uh, we're not in control of the zone. I just want to make sure that we're not going to get spawn locked here, that we're not going to cause a stagger. Um, because, you know, even though we do have a disconnect here, right now we are two players down. We don't want to lead to uh, a bad stagger that might actually cost us the game. Um, that's kind of how that, that kind of thing can happen. So I want to make sure that the player doesn't get too much further up. And uh, I'm going to let this clip play out, and then we're going to go back and talk about why I do what I do and why it works. So Emil gets credited with the splat there, and it was a good follow-up from them. I, I wonder if that's uh, the Emil who is the, the head of Ludi. Wouldn't be surprised if that was the case. That'd be cool if so. Hi, Emil. Um... So they did a good job following up on that, but despite the fact that I get the assist for that, I would definitely say that I am the player that set that whole play up. Let's talk about how I did it briefly. So the first thing I do in this situation is I throw a bomb on the left-hand side, and then the second thing I do is paint on the right-hand side. So this player is trying to move forward up our ramp and get closer to our base. If I just stand here and fire my main weapon, then if I fire on the right, they move to the left. If I fire on the left, they move to the right. I can't defend this super well, especially against the duelies who can dodge roll around. Um, they also had a brush and I wasn't quite sure which player this was just yet. And seeing, you know, that that's one of the opponents, they could also just kind of move through enemy ink and go whichever side it's least convenient for me. Um, so it's not the surest fire thing, unless I've got my aim on perfectly, that I'm going to be able to stop them with just the main weapon here. But if I put the bomb out there, while the bomb is exploding, I can also be shooting on the opposite side. And so now... Instead of controlling one line, I can actually control this entire width of the ramp because the bomb is covering one side and my shots are covering the other. This player who is trying to run forward runs into this wall of hitboxes, this wall of damage, and they are forced to back up and there's no way forward for them. Now, meantime, Emil sees that I am engaging with this player and spotting an opportunity to hit that player in the back they are able to drop down knowing that this player has no more movement options. They cannot move forward. It's very predictable where it is that they can possibly move from here. And so Emil is able to swoop in and get the picks. So the takeaway from this is that if you place your bombs precisely, what that enables you to do is to stop your opponents from using certain space on the map. Whatever it is that you don't want your opponents to be able to reach, Put a bomb there first. I didn't want this player to be able to get to the piece of cover, the unpaintable turf that's right there on my left. Because if they got there, then they'd be able to kind of shark around the wall, play a little ring around the rosy with me, and get into a position where they can surprise me by sneaking around the corner and trying to hit me. 
I don't like that that kind of 50-50 toss up here, especially when their teammates outnumber me for the time being and they're close behind. I want this fight to not come anywhere closer to me. I want to wall them out right here and stop them. And so the bomb there cuts them off from being able to get to that angle at all. Then the other option is for them to run directly at me. Now that's a little bit less advantageous for them because I can be pre-firing them. That is, I can be holding down the fire button as they move in so that I'm hitting them with a shot before they can start firing their weapon. Um, but even so, with the dualies, you know, they might be able to dodge roll forward a little bit. But as soon as I am able to paint the area that they would like to be able to move through, they decide, eh, this is, this is a bit too much. I am going to back up instead. And they dodge roll straight backwards using, I believe, both of their rolls right into Emil's waiting arms. So place your bombs where you don't want the opponents to be, whatever kinds of bombs those are. Realize that, of course, certain bombs are going to be better at this than others. The splat bomb is one of the best. Suction bombs are also excellent, although you have to place them a little more carefully because of how long their fuse time is. I would have needed to, to place that bomb a lot closer to me in order to stop this player if I had a suction bomb, uh, but it's still very doable. You can do things like rolling a torpedo, you can do things like placing an auto bomb that's out of range to lock onto them so that it's just going to sit in that spot and explode. You, you've got a bunch of different ideas for how you can block off that space depending on what sub weapon you have. Um, but just lobbing it in the general direction of this player, especially trying to aim straight at them, that's going to enable them to move away from it and dodge it. If I put it in their way though, if I make it an obstacle for them, if I make it take the space they're trying to move into next, that's what will really limit them and make them feel like they're hitting a brick wall and force them to take some evasive maneuvers that lead to them losing the fight.